Hello students, welcome to your math lesson today. Today we're going to continue talking about equivalent fractions. We started these yesterday. If you did your lesson in the hub, you should already know what an equivalent fraction is. And today we're going to learn a new strategy to decide without using pictures if two, if two fractions are equivalent. So let's remind ourselves, what are equivalent fractions? On your screen, I put three examples of, a, of fractions that are all equivalent to each other. If we look at the whole, we can see each fraction has a whole square, but that whole is split into different numbers of pieces. In this fraction, in one half, our whole is split into two pieces with one shaded. In this fraction, two fourths, our whole is split into two or four pieces with two shaded. And in our last fraction, 8 sixteenths, our whole is split into 16 pieces with 8 shaded. But if we look at the amount that each fraction takes up, we can see that they're all equivalent. If we think of this as a chocolate bar, if I eat half of the chocolate bar, that's the same or equal to me eating two-fourths of the chocolate bar, which is the same or equal to me eating 8 sixteenths. I was just cutting it into a different amount of pieces. But these are all equivalent to each other because they take up the same amount of the whole. Let's look at it using fraction bars, which is what we worked on yesterday. On your screen, I put some fraction bars. These should look familiar from yesterday. We just said that 1 half was equal to 2 fourths. We can use a fraction bar to see this in a different way. 1 half of a whole. We can see, remember, my whole goes from left to right. So one half is equal to two fourths of a whole. I want you to see if you can find any more fractions that are equivalent to one half and two fourths. Pause your video and look at your fraction bars to decide which other fractions are equivalent. Press play when you're ready to check your work. Let's see. Oh, I, can, I see that three... Sixth is also equivalent to one half. I see four eighths is equivalent to one half. I see that my tenths are going to be equal. Let's see how many. One, two, three, four, five tenths is equivalent. And I see my twelfths. One, two, three, four, five. 6 twelfths are also equivalent. So I always like to think of a chocolate bar. If I eat half a chocolate bar, that's the same as me eating 2 fourths, which is the same as me eating 3 sixths, which is equal to me eating 4 eighths, which is equal to 5 tenths, and it's also equal to 6 twelfths. All of these fractions are equivalent to each other, because they take up the same amount of our whole chocolate bar. Now we won't always have fraction bars in front of us in our everyday lives. So let's think of a strategy that we could use to just decide by looking at our numbers if these fractions are equivalent. Let's use 1 half and 2 fourths. Now these are fractions we already know are equivalent to each other. But we're going to learn a strategy that will help us if we're not sure. Now, in order to understand this strategy, you need to understand what a whole is. So let's think of chocolate again. If I have a whole and I split it into two pieces, that means my denominator is going to be two. Now, if I ate the whole chocolate bar, how many halves did I eat? Well, I ate two halves. What if I ate a whole chocolate bar but this time I had split it into thirds. Well, that would make my denominator three. If I ate the whole chocolate bar, I would have eaten one, two, three thirds. Are you starting to see a pattern there? Let's say I ate a chocolate bar again and now I split it into 10 pieces. If I ate the whole thing, how many tenths did I eat? Well, I would have eaten 10 tenths. 
So all of these, these are equivalent to each other because they all equal a whole. But look at what you see with your numerator and denominator. Numerator and denominator. Numerator, denominator. Do you see it? My numerator and denominator are the same number. So when I have a numerator that's equal to the denominator, that means I have a fraction that is a whole. So I want you to quiz yourself now. Let's say I have a fraction where my denominator is six. How many sixths would be a whole? Six sixths would be a whole. What if my denominator is eight? Eight eighths would be a whole. So now that we understand fractions that are equal to one or a whole, that's going to be a strategy that's going to help us make or decide if we have equivalent fractions. So I know when I multiply a number times one, which is the same thing as a whole. If I have six times one, that means I have six groups of one. Well, my answer is just six. If I have seven groups of one, my answer, oops, seven groups of one, I have seven. So when I multiply something times a whole, it's going to stay the same. It's going to be equal to what I started with. So if I multiply a fraction times what a whole, if I multiply a fraction times a whole, it's just going to be itself. So if I were to say one half times a whole, that would just be one half, right? Because I'm just multiplying times one. So to tell if two fractions are equivalent, I can multiply them times one whole. Okay, so I'm multiplying them times a fraction that is equal to one whole. So let's see, how could I get from one to four? One times what will get me to four? Well, one times four will get me to four. So if I multiplied by half times four fourths, well, is two times four eight? Yeah. So if I multiplied the top and the bottom times four, that shows me that these fractions are equivalent to each other because one times four on the top is four and two times four on the bottom is four. And four fourths is the same thing as a whole. So really I'm just multiplying times one, which is why it allows me to say that they're equal. Let's try another. I want to decide if two fifths is equal to eight tenths. Is two fifths equal to eight tenths? So let's see how I can go from the top and let's see if it matches the bottom. So two times what is going to get me eight? Two times four is going to get me eight. So if I did five times four at the bottom, because whatever I do to the top has to be the same as what I do to the bottom, is five times four 10? No, five times four is 20. So this doesn't work for the bottom. So since I couldn't do the same thing to the top and the bottom, these fractions are not equal to one another. Whenever I'm deciding if I have equivalent fractions, I think of whatever I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. And if that doesn't work, then my fractions are not equal. All right, let's give you one to try now. All right, I want you to decide if one third and three ninths are equal. Go ahead and pause your video. See if you can do the same thing to the top and the bottom to decide if they're equal. Go ahead and press play when you're ready to check. So we just decided that if you multiply or divide the top and the bottom of your fraction by the same thing that's equal to a whole, that's how we can tell if our fractions are equivalent to each other. So I'm thinking about one to three. How do I get from one to three? Well, my number's getting larger, so I need to multiply. And I think one times what gives me three? Well, one times three gives me three. 
So if I did one times three at the top, that means I need to multiply my bottom of my fraction times three. And three times three equals nine. So that works for the top and the bottom. So I know that my fractions are equivalent. Let's show what this would look like as a picture. If I started with one third, I would have one piece shaded out of three. Now to see if that's equivalent to three ninths, if I cut each of my pieces into three, I can see that now I have three pieces shaded and nine pieces total. They still take up the same amount of my whole, but I just cut them into smaller pieces, which represents why we multiplied the top and bottom times three. We cut them into three smaller pieces to make three ninths. Let's try one more before you go on to your next practice. Use your strategy to see if two thirds and eight tenths are equivalent to each other. Pause the video and press play when you're ready to check. All right, let's check with our numerator first. I'm getting from two to eight, so that's getting larger, so I know I need to multiply. Two times what is going to get me eight? Two times four is going to give me my numerator of eight. So whatever I did to the top, I need to do the same to the bottom. Three times four, well, three times four is 12. But my denominator says 10. So since multiplying times four at the top and multiplying times four at the bottom did not both work, that means my fractions are not equal. Go ahead onto your next activity in the hub for some extra practice and make sure you complete your exit ticket and click submit at the end. Also go back and make sure you've completed Tuesday, Wednesday, and today's exit tickets. I need to make sure I have all three by the end of this week. And I'll see you tomorrow for our lesson. Bye.